Uh, thank you very much, Chris. Hello, all. Uh, good morning, everyone. So you need another round of coffee, I guess, now. Um, good morning. OK, how many of you are carrying on-call mobile phone? Is anybody on on-call today? Wow. Uh, thank you very much, folks. And uh, I mean, I'm hoping some of you have done on-call. Anybody? Is there anyone in this room who says that my production deployment not got messed up? Is there anyone in this room? Thank you very much. I think this is what we love about the engineering community, right? Because I have also done editing the config files directly on the production servers 30 years before. So um, today I'm going to talk about the, the engineering success for Blueprint for the effective platform adoption. My name is BMK Lakshmi Narayanan. Thank you very much, Chris. And uh, I am the transformation architect with section six. And uh, this is uh, kind of a technical, non-technical talk because this is something I want to share what I've learned as a practitioner, being the consumer for the platforms and also being on the platform engineering space. So that's my talk. And this is me, my name is BMK, and I've been in the global community for a long time, including Team Topology Certificate and also DevOps Institute and CNCF Ambassador, been associated with CNCF since last um, seven, eight years. And what I care about is value stream flow architecture and community, and this is how it's attracted me because these kind of, um, whether it's a single day meetup or a single day event or a multi-day event, you get to learn from people, the practitioners. You know, there was a good talk from the other folks. You understand the scale, the complexity in a highly regulated industry or it is not a regulated industry. It doesn't matter because what challenges that you have, you always learn so much from the people that you hang out with. Uh, I come from New Zealand and Wellington, so um, it's not bad there. Um, I see that uh, Sydney was raining this morning. Okay, now over the last uh, two decades that we have seen that, um, is, is there anyone five plus years experience? Okay, keep your hand up if you're 10 plus experience. Keep your hand up if you're 15, 20, 25. Okay, now see, you, you last two decades we have seen all this, right? Like, you know, what Agile is about predictability. Now, if you agree or not, I don't know. But it's about the agile predictability. DevOps is about the speed, how you accelerate, and the SRE is about the reliability, you know, how you can help your customers, ensuring that the expectations are not sacrificed without you know, sacrificing the time, the uptime of stability, and the lean about the efficiency, the value stream management, the flow, the metrics associated with that, how you can cut down the waste. It's about the efficiency. And then cloud is about flexibility. It gives you the elasticity, right? Like you know, that you want to deploy and scale as much as you want. It gives you the flexibility. It doesn't matter which cloud. But what exactly is uh, the platform engineering then, right? So now, in my view, this is my personal take on this. Now, what it does is actually it em empowers actually your developers and your platform engineering about is empowerment and also acceleration. And that's what actually it's meant to be. So if you want to define the same line how I defined about predictability, speed, acceleration, reliability, and flexibility. So in my view, this is about empowering the developers. And it is about giving the teams the tools, the autonomy, the purpose, and the confidence to build smarter, at the same time deliver faster, collaborate better, and innovate at scale. It's about creating the foundation that makes all those practices that we talked about earlier and laying this. Now, let me take a different spin because platform engineering, we always look at from the perspective of technology and tooling. You talk about Kubernetes platform, you talk about the key walls, you talk about Terraforms and automation and whatnot. But I want to talk about a different perspective of the platform engineering from the business side of it because as technologists, we do we do a terrible job in explaining the business value proposition of any of these initiatives in terms of business, how it is going to help. And if there anybody in this room who says that I'm not waiting for a budget approval in my organization to spin up any of the new technology, then probably I'm keen to talk to you later to figure out what is the magic or what is the portion that you're drinking that I could also drink, right? Now, but that's not the case. So here is the, uh, the I see the four pillars of the, why I see this as a strategic business enabler, because this is something that is important that as technologists that we need to portray to our business, hey, this is what is happening. We are helping business to accelerate value delivery. We are helping improve customer experience and customer satisfaction. We are helping to align the business goals better you know, by doing this. And we are also helping organization to save costs, reduce waste, and also we are helping the organization to innovate at scale. Because this is important that you understand, you know, these are 
it's not about technology, it's about helping the business to do a better job, and we being engineers, helping the business to achieve their goals. That's what actually the fundamentals for us. Now, I see the platform engineering as actually a launch pad. Launch pad for all these things that we talked about in the previous things, like you know, it empowers the team, and also it ensures the consistency and uh, reliability, and also the scalability, and improves the workflow. This is an important thing because, I, I mean, in a regulated industry, because I come from banking experience for 15 years, and then it's standard to onboard a developer, it takes four weeks. Agree? I am not hearing it. Is anybody who onboards a developer in a half a day time? So in, in my organization, I can just go, you walk in, the first day you sign, you get your batch, and you're ready, the laptop is ready to go. Is there, is there anyone? Happens that fast? Kind of? Okay, right. So, I mean, I can see that, like, you know, some of your managers are in the same room, so you are not saying the truth, but... <laughs> right. And also, the thing is that it reduces the cognitive load, right? And uh, I would like to tell you a small story. I already made a deal with uh, Cody that um, I will go a little over time. <laughs> so, 2015, if I remember, and uh, I wanted a virtual mission for deploying and workload. So the uh, infrastructure team said that, hey, BMK, we have an easiest, very simple form. What is that? In an Excel sheet where you go and fill all this, how much of CPU, what data center you need, what is the storage, and where do you need, what kind of an IP address, and what kind of workload you're going to run. And do you know what? It took two weeks to get the virtual mission. 2020, the platform engineering team said, hey, I wanted a virtual machine. This time, I want it on the cloud. That's good. And they said, BMK, we have a fantastic way to, for you to create. It's self-service. What is that? Same Excel sheet. <laughs> wow. Then you fill in everything. And this time, to surprise, anybody would like to take a guess how long it took for spinning a virtual machine? Sorry? Three. Three. Oh, you're close. Six weeks. <laughs> Wow, so what happened to the cloud now, okay? So what happens in an, a highly regulated industry, you put all these constraints, so you have such a flexibility to speed up something, but we put a lot of red tapes, bureaucracy, approval process, governance, committees, filling the documents, and that takes six weeks. And do you know what? On top of that, the day when I got the virtual machine, I found out it doesn't have internet access. So, my POC failed. Anyway, that's coming because there is no ingress uh, approval from architecture team. Now, I'm going to talk about quickly the five key takeaways for you from the blueprint point of view. This is, again, my experience. This is not an exhaustive list. This is purely from my perspective. Now, you may have more or less. You now, you have seen this. The five things that I want to talk about is number one is about treat the platform as a product. The reason because how you have your mobile banking app, how you have a retail you know, banking app or you have a retail online shopping experience, you need to treat this because this is for your internal customers, right? So you need to have the same vigor as what you're treating with your external customer, the investments that you need, treating the platform as a product, and also measuring the success that you need. Number two is, so this is a, some of the principles about that. I'm not going to read line by line, but this is some of, something that you, know, you need to be mindful about it, why you need to have a clear product mindset because a lot of technical product managers, as I said earlier, we are unable to articulate the business value. So, but you need to be understanding that these are some of the key things. When you change your mindset from product management discipline, you bring the whole vigorous you know, management expertise for treating the platform as a product. Now, number two is about the stakeholders' buy-in. As I said earlier, if anybody in this room says that I don't need a budget approval, I can do whatever I want, but I am not sure who's going to play, pay your cloud bills you know, when you get that. But you need stakeholders buy-in. I'm not just talking about the leadership perspective, but you need to you know, support from your security, audit, risk management, governance, architecture, consumers, operators. You, know, you need everybody you know, to help you and support this. So involve them from day one. And then the third one is about the team structure and interactions. Okay. I invented a term called TBD. Okay, what is, do you know what is that, TBD? TDD, you know, right, test-driven development. TBD is ticket-based development, okay? If anything you need, what do you have to do? Create a service now ticket, assign to the infrastructure team. They create for you, and then they have their own priority. You have seen all this drama happening, agree? Like, so you sit all close by, but talk to the team, not through the API, but through the tickets. 
create a ticket, assign to them. They have their own sprint prioritization. They go through the process, and they create this. And this is a drama that we say. So the team infra, ins the, the structural interaction is more important for you. So what is that you need? I love the team topologies, I mean, construct the reason because it gives you clear definition of four different teams and also gives you clear interaction methods like platform as a service. You want an, as an enabler, you want as a consumer. So you need this structure. And uh, promote the cross-functional collaboration and you don't need a ticket. You rather actually self-service everything that you need. And the, when you treat the platform as a product, you also need actually a rapid feedback loops because you need to learn what is working well, what is not working well, how you can quickly fine tune the operations that you're giving. So it's not about spinning a Kubernetes cluster, but at the same time, like, you know, what is the, the resizing that I can do? What does the scale set looks like? You know, what is my, the key wall looks like? What is the API that I have with this? You know, whether it's easy for them. I know an organization where they bought a product and on top of that, they actually layered their own API management. And by the way, the integration was so difficult and uh, it didn't help actually the consumers. So you need to be really mindful about the rapid feedback loops. The one more thing is uh, people say that collect an NPS. NPS like you know, running a survey, finding out what is happening, the health and all this stuff. But I would say try to collect the feedback as much as possible through the automated thing. So by the way, how many of the people are using it? And uh, you know, try to collect some of the analytics from the platform. So by the way, you can improve the services. I'm not saying the NPS, the survey is not good, but you can still run on top of it. But you want to ask people about you know, you know, you need to understand their experience with the platform. That's more important, right? And iterate quickly as much as possible, and also measure the performance continuously. The last one is driving the platform adoption. Platform adoption. This is uh, because if you are thinking you build it, they will come. Probably that will not happen. The same time, do not assume that somebody needs this and you're building it. Rather, actually understand that what actually the team needs. Because it's similar, startup mentality. The platform engineering I see is actually startup mentality. You, know, you need to understand what exactly the pain point of the customer, what he is trying to solve. That is what you need. That is the reason why my first point was about the product management and the product management discipline. So that is important for you. But when you do that, simplify the onboarding process. Do not take four weeks. Okay, to onboard. Self-service is important. But at the same time, what the platform as a product and also the engineering capability is going to give you is provide the guardrails, you know, provide the governance as per your requirement. Do not make the paper things, like you know, people, people have to turn up to somebody's desk or committee to seek an approval. Rather have everything as self-service as a first-class reason. Incentivize the early adapters and tell them the clear cut, you know, because you don't want to surprise them with the bill after a month and they will figure out which cost center I need to now put at this, right? Rather you talk to, and you don't want to be in like, you know, uh, standing and giving a explanation why you went over, right? And uh, these are the complete blueprint. And again, as I said, this is from my experience. And uh, you may have add to or through on top of it. It doesn't matter. But what I mean is actually, if you're treating platform engineering, if you're taking the journey as a platform engineering, depends on the organization complexity, depends whether you're a startup, you're a mid-sized organization, you're a large enterprise organization, what you do in the space would differ. How you get investment would differ. How your, you know, your stakeholders are going to come to the party is going to differ, so your experience will change. So you don't need anything and everything, but maybe pick one or two as you move forward, right? Now, I am really keen to understand what is your next step and how you are going to engineer your own success with platform. And I want you, when next year we turn up here, I would like to listen from you guys and you know, what you guys are doing in this space. And uh, there is a great paper from CNCF about the platform white paper. You can scan the QR code. I think this will be available after the post uh, session. It's a fantastic uh, resource for you guys on the CNCF website. And they have a kind of a model, what all you need to consider, uh, et cetera. And also I have this four books recommendations for you, which I have used. And uh, the last one, the platform engineering, book from O'Reilly, it's yet to come. It's uh, releasing on uh, November 12th. But whereas like the project to product and the team topology and the build trap from Melissa Perry, if you're a product manager or if you'd like to give the gift to your product manager, these are the good book for you. And uh, with that, thank you very much, folks, for your time and attention. And I highly appreciate that. Have a great day for this.